the Mountain West crown a champion and send six to the dance. It's March Madness time, so we're back on the big mountain to give you a little preview. Hey, it's great to have you here on the mountain again. I am JY. This is my good friend Steve. And Steve, we are just doing basketball episodes all the time because why not? It's March. Why not? It's March. We got to get into it right now. And we got to do, we're going to do a combined episode. I want to quickly uh, just go back and summarize what happened in the Mountain West uh, tournament. And then we're going to get into we the six teams that made it into the dance. Um, so this is going to be all about the Mountain West, all about Mountain West basketball. So let's first go back and talk really briefly about the Mountain West tournament. Of course, everybody knows if you're a Mountain West fan and, and probably most college basketball fans know, New Mexico crowned the champion of the Mountain West this year through their tournament, their fifth championship in the Mountain West. So that's five out of 25 years here not not too bad uh but they're first since 2014 so they went on a little bit of a, a dry spell here but holy cow coming in having to play in that preliminary uh round if you will the early round to get into the quarters um and they just had an uphill battle but let me tell you they ascended the mountain with just grace i mean crazy scoring abilities fantastic team you know, I did not have them actually making it into the semis. Right. You know, we did some picks. I, I didn't have them getting in. I had Boise beating them. But my goodness, you could just see once they got going, holy cow, what type of team this is. I was concerned for the final because they played the second game in the semis. They had to turn around then and play in the afternoon in, in Vegas. I, I, I mean, great. but they were ready to go. They were clearly popping the Red Bull or whatever in the world they were drinking there. Um, and, and they were good to go. So let me just give, I got to give the Lobos a little bit of love. I want to go over, you know, kind of what happened here with them. Give some, some shout outs to some of their players. So the first round, just annihilate Air Force. You know, obviously that they had that fluke loss to Air Force just several weeks ago. Annihilate them, 82-56, just not even close, and, and it shouldn't be. I mean, between those two teams, not a knock on the Falcons, but it should not be a close game, and it was not. Then they hit Boise, um, and, and I was concerned, honestly, for them in, in, in this game, but uh, they beat them 76-66, to so a double-digit win there. Um, and then they move on to CSU, who also had had the upset there in, in the quarters. So you got New Mexico and CSU, two teams you were unsure about mm -hmm. making it into the dance. We'll get to that here next. Mm -hmm. uh, but they beat the Rams 74-61. to 61. So, you know, their first three games here, double-digit spreads for all three games, and they're playing some good teams. Boise State, very good team. The Rams, very good team, and they had a good tournament too. They kind of needed it. They got it. Um, and then they have San Diego State in the final. You know, the, 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 the nation knows San Diego State coming out of the Mountain West. They probably get the most love, especially because of what they did last year. Absolutely. Obviously, they well made, them, made yeah. themselves a name, yeah, for sure. But uh, they they took it to them, too. Now, not double digits, right. but they were able to run the floor. I'm telling you, this New Mexico team has speed, and I've seen that throughout Little, little concerned with size sometimes with, with certain teams that, that they play against. But if you're looking for speed, look no further than the Lobos. They can run the floor really fast. Uh, got a shout out to House here. He had 28 points in that game, in the championship game. Named the MVP of the tournament. Toppin, who I've talked about before, fantastic. 13 points, 11 rebounds. He also had a really, really strong tournament. Um, and then Dent. Only played 12 minutes. Another, you know, really strong guard. Probably one of their uh, their their best guards. He really kind of unsung throughout the country. He's very very solid. Uh, I, I believe he was not feeling well in, in that final game, so he did not play much. But they were able to get it together with with the other guys coming off the bench and, and whatnot. And House and Toppin really obviously stepping up and getting the points they needed. So I got to give a shout out to the Lobos. I did underestimate you. I didn't have you going this far, but. Props to you, and I'm going to throw it to Steve because Steve said the only way he saw mm -hmm. the Lobos making the tournament was to either beat Utah State convincingly in the final game of this regular season, which they didn't do. Right. So Steve's like, well, they got to win the tournament if they want to get in. Well, guess what, Steve? They listened to you, and they ran the table. Yeah, you know, I wasn't sold on New Mexico making the tournament based on how they played that last month of the season. Yeah. 
you know, they, they kind of put themselves in a position where they had to, to play their way in, and boy, did they. Uh, just an amazing tournament. And we talked about this uh, on the preview episode. You know, you have teams at this point. Some teams, they knew they were in. You know, San Diego State yes. knew they were going to be in. I think Boise, probably Utah, Utah State, State, and even maybe even Nevada. Yeah. They knew they were in no matter what. So they have different motivation. Sure, they'd love to win the tournament, right. you know, their, their, their conference tournament. But, you know, when you have to just to live to fight another day, and New Mexico has been doing that for this last week. Yeah. Um, so props to them. I said they had to win to get in, and, and they did. So, yeah. And I got to give a shout out to you, JY, because you predicted uh, six teams, Mountain West getting six teams. I said I definitely four, but I didn't, you know, maybe we'd get to five, but we got six, like you said. And even Colorado State wasn't sold on them getting in. Yep. So they had to do something and show something in the tournament, and they did. They, yep. they had an upset, um, yep. and so they, they played their way in. Now, they kind of, their seating maybe isn't so great. So right. I think you want to talk about that. We're going to get into that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a little, you know, back. Pat here, I, I was on the six, and, and I'm glad they yep. did it. Um, and, and CSU, I did a small short when they won yep. uh, their quarterfinal match to make it to the semis. I'm like, that's what they needed to do. They needed to they get did. that one more big win mm-hmm. to ensure that they were going to get in. They got it. Uh, so they played to get in, and clearly, as we said, the Lobos had to play to get in, and, yep. and they did too. I really would like to know if the Lobos would have gotten in if they would have either lost in this championship game to San Diego State or... Or even lost in in the semis. I know you're going to say well, there's no way they would have gotten in with a loss in the semis. Yeah. Um, I, I still think they could have lost the championship game and, and still gotten in the tournament. That's my opinion. But who cares? Yeah, they're in. They're in. They're they, enough they, of that they speculation. They did what they had to do. They did what they in. had to do. So let's talk about the tournament now. Yeah. Let's get into it. I, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I'm a fan that we have six. Mm-hmm. I am not a fan of where we are at right now. Yeah. For the most, by and large, there's a few that I'm I'm good with. I hate the fact. That two of these six teams have to play in this number 10 seeded game, this pre-game. I don't even know what the hell they call it. First four. The first first four. four. Oh, gosh. You used to call it a play-in game. Yes. But people didn't like that because it suggested you weren't in the tournament, but now it's called the first four. I hate it. I I'm, I'm really I mean, I don't care about the first four. I, I hate that I have two Mountain West teams in the first four. And, so, two, and they're 10 seeds. The way it's set up, even as a 10 seed, they have to play in this. We don't do basketball very much. Maybe someone can enlighten us as to why they're doing this. <laughs> I hate it. Let's start with uh, San Diego State in the East. So I'm going to go you know uh, around, and we'll start with San Diego State. Number five, the highest ranked, uh, probably not a surprise, the highest ranked Mountain West seed Number five, I know there was some people talking they could be a four, but, you know, they're a five. They get UAB in the first round. I like them to advance. And I absolutely could see them in the Sweet 16 here, uh, potentially playing Auburn or Yale. You would think the number four scene here with uh, Auburn would win that. So I don't want to look past UAB. You don't want to get, you know, get the cart before the horse. But I do like San Diego State, <coughs> excuse me, to get into the Sweet 16 here. Uh, So let's go out to the West then, Steve. Mm -hmm. We've got Nevada and New Mexico both getting into the West, which is which is great. The 10 seed being Nevada, the 11 seed being New Mexico. I'm a little surprised New Mexico's the 11 seed here, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But you had mentioned, and I'll let you talk about it. You know, playing Clemson here maybe not too bad of a draw, and the way they're playing, look out, Clemson Tigers. Mm -hmm. And I saw a stat today, actually, that 11 six. Uh, matchup over the course the most upsets in the first round have come in this 11-6 so hey Lobos let's let's keep things rolling (coughs) excuse me anything with with that game you want to go or anything with the Lobos I have two I have two games I want to talk about uh, two teams I want to talk about but I'll wait till you're done going through everything all right so Nevada playing Dayton in the first round again out of the west Uh, that's a 7-10 seed I like Nevada I've been on Nevada they're a good team didn't have a great tournament you know, I'm not going to say why they did or why they didn't. They clearly hit some hot teams. You know, got upset there by CSU, who really needed that that win. Um, I, I like the chance here for, for Nevada to win their, their opening round. Then they hit the number two seed in, in Arizona. That's going to be tough. That's going to be very tough for them. Um, but I would like to see one of these two schools in the West, either Nevada or New Mexico, make it into the Sweet 16. I think we have a good shot here sending one of those two teams into the Sweet 16, I probably at this point going to put my money on New Mexico, given how well they're playing right now, and I think they have a slightly better better draw uh, with who they got. So let's get one of these two teams into the into the uh, Sweet 16. Midwest, 
we're going to talk about the number eight Utah State Aggies versus the number nine TCU. And, you know, I, I like this for, for Utah State. I, I would have liked them to be, to be a seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, eight, eight, nine isn't bad. Of course, you get that eight, nine, you get a, probably hopefully a nice big win. And then what do you do in the next game? You got to play the freaking one, one seed. seed yeah. um, so that's not great for sure. But I, I like the matchup here for Utah State. They are a good team. I, I actually think they're slightly underrated from a national standpoint. Um, so I, I, I like them coming out of the Mountain West. But, of course, when you have that number one, it's going to be very difficult for them to, to move on into that second weekend. We were talking about this. I think that number one in their bracket is Purdue. Yes. Um, one of my Big Ten schools. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was last year or recently, uh, they were, I believe they were the first uh, 16 seed to lose to a one or maybe the second time that ever happened. Yeah, so, I think it's happened twice. I yeah, so yeah. you never know. Yeah, so yeah. let's get to these last two. The two I... I I don't like them. Yeah. They're these number 10, uh, what do you call them? First First four. four. First four. So Midwest, we got number 10, CSU versus Virginia. I don't necessarily have an issue with the number 10 seed here for CSU. I think it's a a decent seed for, for what they did. Um, and you know, you win that, that preliminary, I'm going to call it preliminary okay. because that's what it is, which I don't think it should be, but preliminary round, then they get Texas in the true first round, if you will. Um, and, and not a bad matchup for them there either. Um, I, I, I kind of like it for, for CSU. I, I, I like how they're playing here recently. They have been pretty up and down. So we'll see what CSU Rams team shows up here on Tuesday night at nine o'clock. Uh, and, and we'll see what happens there. Then the one that I don't like the most, the game that I don't like the most, number 10, Boise State versus Colorado. This is Wednesday at 9 o'clock. The 10 seed to me, Boise, is underranked here. They shouldn't, A, be playing in this preliminary round at all, and B, I don't think they should be a 10 seed. I think they should be an 8 or a 9 seed. So this is the one I have the most problem with. I'm not a Broncos homer. I just, this is a, this is a better Bronco team than a 10 seed. Um, I don't have many other problems with, with the seeds overall. Again, I'd like to see them a little bit higher, but wouldn't everybody, but I hate this 10 first four bull crap that the Broncos have to deal with, with a Colorado team. That's pretty good. I mean, this is, that is not going to be an easy game on Wednesday night for them. The winner of that then plays number seven, Florida. I just don't like it. I don't like that we have two teams playing in this freaking first round crap. So I'm hopeful they both win. They both are like, hey, we told you the Mountain West is a good freaking basketball right. conference. Stop with this bull crap. So, and you can kind of do that if we get a win, win from the Rams and a win from the Broncos here during the week. I, I, I just, I'm salty about it, Steve. Help me. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. And, and it really, I mean, it does show, and I'm a Big Ten guy. But, you know, the, the them these teams getting placed in that first four, it definitely shows bias. Yeah. There's bias towards the power conferences, um, you know, when uh, it, it, it's just the way it is. You know, I think San Diego State is probably the only school in basketball from the Mountain West that just gets that automatic credibility. And you make a Final Four, you have a long history of basketball success. Uh, I think, you know, New Mexico is one of those teams where if they had a run of success a few years here, they could m- move up into that where they would get some. But but people just don't think of Boise State as a basketball school. Right. Um, and so the, it's it's bias. It's just naked bias towards, you know, the ACC, the SEC, the Big Ten, um, and probably even Big 12. Um, yeah. And, you know, that that's 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 all it is. But I want to talk about some good things here. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have two teams from the Mountain West making it to the Sweet 16 this year. Okay. Um, and I did this. I came up with these before, you know, right before. So it's going to be a repeat of what you were talking about. But we came up yeah. with this independently. You, right. You looked at the bracket independently. I looked at the bracket. So I got two teams that I think are going to make. I have a, a one that's just an obvious one and kind of a wild card. Okay. So first of all, the strongest bracket is in the East. You got UConn in there. They're the beast of the East. Yeah. Um, and you would love to avoid the East. However, I do think San Diego State has a really good draw to uh, the Sweet 16, and I've got them making the Sweet 16. Okay. First round, like you mentioned, they have to face UAB. Uh, I think they'll easily get through them. Um, and then in the second round, they have Auburn. You know, Auburn's a solid team, um, but I think they're very beatable. I think yeah. San Diego State is the better team. I think I think that's a great opportunity for San Diego State to show that bias uh, against the SEC or mm. in favor of the in SEC. Favor, right. 
um, by by beating Auburn and getting right back to the Sweet 16, continuing their credibility run. Now, at that point, obviously, things go to chalk. They're going to have to face UConn, who just looks unbeatable. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so we'll see. But I definitely see another run to the Sweet 16 for San Diego State in what's the hardest bracket, probably, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, with, with UConn being over there. But... My other one, my wild card, you know, I was hard on the Lobos as they came down towards the end of the season. I said they had to play their way in. They had to win the tournament, and they did. Uh, So kudos to them. I think they're going to – hopefully they're not too tired. Hopefully they got something in their legs. Yeah. But I think they're going to keep that, uh, you know, win, survive, you know, win and survive, survive and move on uh, mentality going. Their tournament basically already started. Like, you know, they have – they're in that – Yep. You know, in that basically that method of playing where we got to keep winning, you know, so we can play one more. So I see them, I see them beating Clemson in the first round. Yep. I think Clemson to me is overrated. Um, I, I, they're, they're soft, and the way New Mexico is is playing, I think they could beat them. And I even see them beating Baylor. I mean, that yep. that could that could go either way. So they're kind of my more of my wild card. Okay. But I think they continue this run. They get to the Sweet Sixteen. And they really show, and I, and I think this is a good chance with San Diego State potentially playing Auburn in the second round, and then if New Mexico can upset Clemson right off the bat, I think that's a great chance. You mentioned eleven and six seeds. Yes. Um. So for the longest time, the twelve and five game was what everybody looked at. Like these are the best games, you know, back in the day. Uh, uh, Bryce Drew, I think, was a, was his team was the the um, twelve seed, and there were some awesome upsets for a run. But as you mentioned, if you look at it, it's the eleven and six seeds. Mm-hmm. Those eleven seeds, there's some good teams, so maybe some mid major teams yeah. that aren't getting the credibility playing against some other teams who are probably getting a little more credibility because they're they're you know in those power conferences. Yeah. So a lot of upsets with eleven six. I think we're primed for one of those. So those are my two teams. I got San Diego State making the Sweet Sixteen in the East, and I have New Mexico making it in the West. Yeah, I mean, coming into this, before I looked at the brackets, I was I was thinking, man, if we can get three of, of these six into the Sweet 16, that would be amazing. Yeah. I don't I don't see it. I would say if we can get two, that would be amazing. I would love to get two, and I would pick those two. If there was a third that I had to pick, and people might think I'm nuts for picking this, mm-hmm. but I'm going to pick Utah State. Um, I, I, I like that team. They they are a strong team. I think they're clearly underrated. Um, but I know they play Purdue, potentially. If they can get past TCU, then they got Purdue. Great has to be great, 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 great to get past Purdue. Does he have it? We'll find out. Um, but I, I would say my, my super dark horse to get a third team in, if I had to pick between all of these schools... Uh, would be Utah State, and I'm I'm kind of leaving uh, Boise out of it because they have to play an extra. They have to play three games yes, to get into yeah. the freaking sixteen. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know I, that, that that's just tough for Boise to do it and the Rams to do it. Uh, so I'm gonna take Utah State as my uber dark horse for a potential upset if they get out of the first round. And I probably just jinxed them. They probably used the freaking TCU, and I we don't even talk yeah, about we'll it. We'll see. So I, I did want to point out real quick yeah. that. Um, I believe it was the Big 12 and SEC had eight that they, they sent eight teams. Is mm-hmm. that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. And and the Big 10 and the Mountain West brought six teams. Correct. Right? Yep. So, so those are the top four. Let yep. me say this again. The Big 12. Yep. The SEC. Mm-hmm. The Big 10. Yep. A.K.A. the Big Boys. Yes. Yep. You didn't hear me say the ACC. Right, right. You didn't hear me say the Pac-12. Right. You didn't hear me say the Big East. Right. I said, Who? The Mountain Frickin' West. Yep, yep. Well done, Mountain West. Yeah, that's all. I, I, I got cheerlead a little bit again. No, I, I, kudos to you. Kudos to the Mountain West. I'm really happy for our Mountain West basketball fans. Yeah, the Ace. So Mountain West was right there with the Big Ten with yep. six teams. Uh, you know, I told you I thought four, maybe five. Yes. Um, and I said the Big Ten was at least going to get six, and they could possibly get seven or eight. They ended up at six. So when you have a conference like the Big Ten, yeah, we were the Big Mountain here. The Big right. Ten, Mountain <laughs> West, right. both got six there teams. You go. In the tournament, and ACC only with five. The 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 Pac-12, which is still the Pac-12 at this yes, point, they are only with four. Yep. The Big East, which is Big East, is considered the the main basketball conference mm-hmm. of the not the power schools, but the mid majors or whatever. Right. They are the power. They kind of got snubbed a little uh, bit, but only got three. Yeah. Um. You know. And so, so the Mountain West should be very. I mean, this is an amazing year for the Mountain West. Yeah. I want to say one other thing. 
the so the tournament Mountain West tournament we wa- both of us you watched more than I did but I did watch some yes. that was in Las Vegas correct it was yeah I thought the venue was amazing the floor was amazing yeah, was floor that was awesome what what arena was that where the where uh, yeah Golden I don't know Knight? the name okay where the Golden Knights Golden, play yes. I don't know whatever that is well, I don't know absolutely fantastic yeah. I I hope it goes back I mean it just it looked amazing the crowd was great the floor was amazing the the coverage on CBS yes. Sports Network fantastic loved it. Uh, some great opportunities to watch college basketball. And I watched, you know, I watched the, the Big East tournament. I watched the Big Ten tournament. I watched the Atlantic Ten. Uh, I watched a lot, uh, some SEC basketball. And the Mountain West put on just as good of a production on CBS as any conference out there. Fantastic. Yeah, agree. And, and I shout out to the fans because yeah. it was great to see the, I mean, the, the whole lower bowl yeah. for the for the quarters, the semis, you know, just fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think I don't remember which game I was watching. Uh, it was I think it was one of the semi games, and they said how full the upper yeah. bowl. You can't see the upper bowls right. when on TV because right. it's dark. Um, but they even commented about how many fans were in the upper bowl for yeah. the Mountain West. You know, I'm watching some of these others. There's nobody in the stands yes. for final games. Yes. Uh, they had, they yes. had the AAC on the other night, and there's nobody Empty. freaking there. Yep. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, mad props to to the fans of the Mountain West, to the fans of these teams. To do it, I mean, Vegas is fun. Yeah, yeah. Give me a good so reason let's to go to Vegas. Right? Let's keep it there. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, maybe I, you and I will go next year. I, I'm maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. It yeah. was awesome to see. Fantastic. That perfect venue. Yeah. Beautiful venue. Yeah. Full of Mountain West fans. Uh, you know, we're gonna keep cheering on this premier Mountain, or I should say, this premier West Coast Conference. Yeah. It's ripe. It's ripe here, Steve. I've said it before. I keep saying it. It's ripe. Washington State, uh, speaking of that, Washington State also made the tournament. They've had a good season. Uh, You know, maybe we'll see them playing with these Mountain West teams uh, coming up in a few years. For sure. Yep, for sure. So, had to do one of these. We'll probably do another one. We're going to have a a live broadcast on Wednesday evening. Uh, Maybe, you know, 9 o'clock. Maybe we can get the the CSU Virginia score up on the broadcast. So, we can keep track of what the heck's going on in that game while we're we're doing live. We do all things Mountain West, all things Big Ten. That's what we're going to be doing on our live episodes mostly. Come down, say hello, join us. You have some questions, please give us some questions. Keep it to about an hour, so 8.30 Eastern Time. That's 5.30 Pacific Time this Wednesday. We'd love to see you there. With that, make sure you give this episode a like. Make sure you subscribe if you like our content. We'll see you next time on The Big Mountain.